There used to be something incredibly appealing about the future. Flying cars, automated homes, and holograms that serve no purpose at all are some of my favorite ideas to come from science fiction 50 years ago. While we don't quite have the flying cars that 80s movies promised us, we did get one very futuristic feature, digital gauges. The first car to have a factory installed speedometer was a 1901 Oldsmobile Curve Dash Runabout, but it quickly became commonplace by the 1910s. Speedometers were rather simple, using gears and a cable to run from the transmission into a gauge displaying the vehicle's speed. It was basic, but it worked. But if I know anything about humans, we always want a little bit of flair. Enter the 1976 Aston Martin Laganda. The Laganda was the first car to feature a digital dashboard. It used a CRT display similar to the TVs that we grew up with. The Laganda's display was revolutionary for two reasons. It was the first of its kind and it didn't have a physical connection to the wheels. It worked off electronic sensors, transmitting signals to the unit, telling it what to display. At the time, this was said to be more accurate than the older styled mechanical speedos, but I'll let you decide for yourself. This kicked off a wave of manufacturers experimenting with digital gauges. And I mean, come on, they were freaking cool. Digital gauges were so iconic that other brands even tried to mimic them with their analog gauges. Look at this 1988 Chevy S10 gauge cluster. It's the Harry Potter puppet pals of the gauge cluster design world. Car makers also pushed for this digital design language onto other parts of the car. These are just a few examples. Enjoy. Digital clusters were a cornerstone of cool cars in the 1980s and 90s. Some would even talk to you. Nissan was known for this, where a tiny record below the dash would play different vocal callouts depending on what warning the car was trying to tell you. Here is a 1986 Nissan 300ZX telling you that the lights are on. Lights are on. Digital clusters were cool but they soon went away. What happened? Well, two major issues arose with the fun 1980s tech. Number one, the sun. It might give us life, but it also creates glare, making daytime driving sometimes annoying and difficult to read your speed on the screen. Reason number two, the more legitimate one, was product failure. Screen technology in the 1980s isn't what it is today. They were faulty and would often go dim or even fully fail after only a few years of use. No problem, just swap it out for a new one. Well, they're not cheap. Digital clusters were often reserved for the higher trim levels of the vehicles, like the turbo models or executive models, because they were expensive to produce. That meant that when they broke, it was very expensive to fix. Most enthusiasts today often swap out a broken digital cluster for a traditional analog one, making them really rare to see in cars. Interestingly though, the technology has made somewhat of a renaissance and is back in full force. Digital gauges are very much in right now, with the 2024 Mustang featuring the ability to make your cluster look like an 80s Fox Bodies cluster, complete with the red line at 55 miles an hour. Audi boasts about their digital cockpit, running the gauges, navigation, and media all through a single gauge cluster screen. Tesla has even moved the speedometer to the center screen, a modern interpretation of the Toyota Echo. Bet no one has drawn that parallel on YouTube yet. Most screens now are LCD, as opposed to the CRT screens from the 1980s, so they are more reliable. At least it seems that way. And so it raises the question, have we not learned from the past? Will modern day cars have screen issues in a few years time? Or has screen technology truly advanced so much that the worries are a thing of the past? I truly hope 
the latter is true. I hope you guys enjoyed my 12th installment of my video essay series and my final one for 2022. I am so appreciative of everyone that has shown this series love. You guys have been really enjoying it. I truly enjoy making it, and I can't wait to start on my January 2023 episode. These come out on the 20th of each month at 2 p.m. Central Time, if you are curious, and I sincerely thank each and every one of you. This year has been amazing thanks to this series, and I'm looking forward to producing more. If you have any ideas or something you'd like to see talked about in a video essay, please leave it in the comment section down below. But until next time, take care, guys.